What's up poker fans? Today I buy in for 300 for 1-2 no limit. This is probably the quickest session I've ever played and against some very aggressive competition. My first three hands were nuts. My very first hand, I straddle the button and get 5-7 suited. The cutoff raises it to 15. That's not too bad. I can see a flop for that price. The action folds until it gets to the big stack, who bumps it to 60. This is an easy decision for me. I'm folded. The very next hand, I get beautiful pocket nines, and I feel like I have something to fight a $60 pre-flop raise with. It gets to me, and I raise it to 25. I'm carving out my turf here. The small blind calls, the big blind gets out of the way, under the gun, who called the straddle, calls my raise. But this time, big stack, who straddled on the button, raises it to 150. Who in the world is this guy? There's about $225 in the pot before any cards come out. I'm folding this. There's no way I'm calling here with the big stack playing behind me. The very next hand after the pocket nines, I get cowboys in early position. I'm ready to fight now. Undergun folds it to me and I raise the straddle to 20. I'm hoping Mr. Big Stack indulges in a high raise again. It folds behind me then he decides to fold two? That's not the way this story was supposed to go. The small blind folds, the big blind comes along, the button gives up his $5, we have $46 in a two-way pot. The flop comes 656 six, rainbow. This should not be in the big blind's range, especially with the $20 pre-flop raise. He checks, I bet out with 45, which is the amount in the pot he gives it up. I get another playable hand right after the pocket kings with a suited 6-5 of clubs. I call the straddle. I would love to see a flop for cheap. The action falls behind, which is a huge relief. The cutoff raises it to 25. The big blind makes the call. I decide to make the call. Then the button makes the call. We're four ways into a $100 pot. I want to know how many of your 1-2 games start off with flops this high pre-flop. The flop is 276 rainbow. It checks to me and I check as well. I want to see where the cutoff feels he stands in his hand. He takes his time counting, then bets to 60. I feel like he's trying to rip a pocket pair, but I'm not sure. The button goes into the tank for a while, then he decides it's not worth it. I'm all in. It comes to me, and I ship it. I really don't think this flop hit my opponent, and I wanted to apply some heavy pressure on him. I'm looking for an easy fold and a scoop with this play. If I win, I can give myself some cushion from the 300 I bought in for. You can't hear him, but he asked me if I flopped two pair or something. He's actually thinking about this much longer than I anticipated. Thankfully, he lets it go, and I add a little over 100 chips to my stack. Six hands later, I get jack nine offsuit in late position. Under the gun folds. Under the gun plus one is slowly getting to his cards. He makes the fold. Under the gun plus two calls. The low jack calls. I raise it to 10. The cutoff gets out of the way. Then it gets to the big stack. He looks at his cards. Something good must have caught his eye because he raises it to 40. 40 seems to be enough to move everyone off their hands. It gets to me, and I decide to see a flop against this guy. I have a horrible hand, but this is information gathering time for me. The flop is all me. It's 993 with two clubs. The big stack is back and forth from his phone, but he only bets 20 this time. 20. I feel a little disrespected by that. Let's see how aggressive he really is. I pop it to 60. He folds like he planned all of this from the start. The very next hand, I get 6-5 offsuit in early position. Under the gun plus one makes the call. I follow along, hoping to see a cheap flop. There's one caller behind before it gets to the big stack. He decides to fold. I'm pretty confident now that I'll see a flop for cheap. The small blind, big blind, and the button make the call. We have six players in the game right now. The 
flop comes queen 5 7 with two diamonds. Here we go with the diamonds again. The big blind leads off with 15. I'm 90% sure I know that he has a queen and a 9 or higher kicker. Under the gun plus 1 makes the call. I make the call and wait to see where the turn would take me. If the big blind is really betting the queen, it won't be a diamond. The turn is my friend. It's a six of clubs. I get two pair, but a straight is now sitting on the board. I don't know the size of his kicker, but it can't be five, six, or seven. Under the gun plus one folds. The big blind only has another 75 behind or so. This is the time to go for everything. I pop it to 125. The button gets out of the way. The big blind goes into the tank. He calculates how much he's going to destroy me. then ships it all in. I throw in some whites and here we go. The river is an ace. It's a card I didn't want to see. My opponent turns over queen 10 offsuit. I turn over the winner and scoop a $380 pot. This session is going really good and I want to keep it that way. Before I can finish stacking my new chips, I get dealt a suited 6-3 of clubs in early position. I call the $5 button straddle. The low jack limps in as well. The big stack says not so fast and bumps it to 35 this time. His betting style does place a lot of pressure on players and I'm starting to like it. I would just prefer not to be playing in front of him. I think two other players made the call before it got to me. I make the call. The low jack who tried to see a flop for cheap folds. The button who is still left to act goes into the tank. A bet seven times the amount of the original bet at a one-two table is a lot to consider. He lets it go. We have four players in a $153 pot. I have one player in front of me, two players behind me, and one of those could wipe my stack out completely. The flop is 655 rainbow. I flop top pair with the backdoor flush draw. It checks to me, I check it. There's no reason to make a move here. The big stack quickly throws out 50. What do you put him on? Because I'm thinking ace queen maybe. The cutoff surprises me and makes the call. Under the gun goes into the tank. It's a lot of money to consider. He lets it go. I decide to make the call. The turn is a queen of clubs. I'm downgraded to second best pair on the board, but my chances of getting a flush have increased. I check it. I'm expecting the big stack to make a splash here if he does have ace queen. He checks it. The cutoff checks it too. I get to see a free card. With a $300 pot, that's insane. The river is a four of clubs. I get the flush. I bet a third and a half of the pot with 85. I'm happy to grab an easy pot if my opponents want to fold. The big stack won't allow that. But he only calls though. I think I have him beat. The cutoff goes into the tank then applies the most pressure I've had all night by going all in with 254 behind. I'm trying to do odds in my head, remember anything he's done in the past, and I'm also worried about the big stack coming over the top if I call. If I lose this hand, I'll be right back at 300. It's a tough decision for me, but I make the call. The big stack didn't want to see that, which is good news for me. He must have something better than just a queen for him to go into the tank with that stack size. He lets it go. The cutoff turns over ace-5 offsuit. I show my flush and we win a major pot close to $900. I knock another opponent out and lower the big stack's chips in the process. Afterwards, 
The Big Stack says he also had a five. Now I know a little more about his range. $35 preflop raise that includes non-paired fives. Two hands later, I get pocket jacks in early position. I've made 800 over what I've bought in so far, and now I'm looking to cruise. I've played for just a little over an hour now. I would call this a good session so far for a 1-2 table. There's a lot of action at the table before it gets to me. I re-raise it to 40. My goal is to get small hands to fold. I get some quick folds behind. I think the message I'm sending is pretty clear. The button though decides to make the call. There's over $100 in the pot with the two players. The flop is low with 654 rainbow. A straight does sit on the board, but that's why I raised preflop. I should only be dealing with high cards, right? I bet 40. I'm hoping my opponent would just fold and live to fight in another hand. He makes the freaking call. We both check. The river is a two. I can see his right hand ready to grab his chips. I check it. Sure enough, he bets out 90. He didn't even count it. I'm not looking to give away chips and I don't have it in me to make some sort of hero call. I let it go. That was one of my biggest losses of the night. The next hand is a PLO bomb pot. There's red everywhere in my hand. I get pocket kings with a two and a seven. I have two hearts and two diamonds. Here we go. The first board comes 10, nine, eight. I have one pair with pocket kings and a backdoor flush draw. Since both cards have to play, I don't have a straight draw. For the second board, I flop two pair with seven two and a king high flush draw. I'm focused on the second board and I'm hoping the top board turns a heart. It gets to the low jack who bets 20. I can call 20. The high jack comes along, the big stack folds. I decide to make the call. The turn on the first board is an eight of hearts. The turn on the second board brings a three. It changes nothing for me, but it does bring a backdoor straight draw for someone else. action checks to me. I go as hard as I can in the paint with a bet of a hundred. There are three other players left in this hand. I get one of them to fold. C8 goes into the tank for a long time. He has about 150 behind. The fact that he's not rushing and shipping it all in gives me some comfort. The guy in seat two is giving off vibes that he's going to fold. At a minimum, I believe we're going to chop this board, unless a heart hits on both boards. He decides to make the call, leaving about 50 behind. As expected, seat two makes the fold. The river on the first board brings a straight, but I only have a pair of kings. The second board brings in a four, and I stick with my two pair. We show down. Thankfully, it's enough to scoop both pots. My opponent turns over the nut flush draw with the ace of hearts. He would have crushed me if a heart hit both boards. He only has a pair of threes. My opponent has never played PLO and is wondering why we're not chopping the top board. And the dealer and Mr. Big Stack is trying to explain that two cards in this hand have to play. We can't just play the board. In my next and last hand of the night, I get a suited ace jack of hearts. It's beautiful. There's a straddle of seven on the button and we already have two callers. I raise it to 25. The hijack tags along. Mr. Big Stack has it out for me and pops it to 75. It's enough to push two peasants out the way. Under the gun doesn't want to let his seven bucks go so easily. If he calls the 75, I believe he would only have about 60 behind. I'm expecting him to ship it all in. He just calls. Under the gun plus one folds, I make the call, the hijack folds, with three ways into a $267 pot. The flop comes 4-6-2 with two hearts. I flop the ace high flush draw. It checks to me, 
I'm not really looking to push the action with the big stack playing behind me. Doesn't even matter. He bets 100 and applies max pressure. Under the gun folds, I have a lot of equity in my hand and the pot amount is decent enough to make this call. I bite the bullet and go for it. I check in the dark, hoping the action would scramble any information about my hand strength. A queen of diamond comes on the turn. The action is on the big stack. He actually checks it back. The river brings an ace of diamonds. I pair the board, but there's a flush staring right at me, laughing. I check it. I'm waiting on the big stack to bet all in. To my surprise, he checks back. I show the ace and it's good. I scoop a $467 pot and have one of the best sessions of my life. I played for about one hour and 45 minutes, came out on top and netted 1100 bucks. In my next video, I'm heading to Vegas. I'll probably be there by the time you're watching this video. Thanks for the support. Hit that like button, subscribe and come back for more.